Okay, here we are. Quick update for those who are interested. I have the wiring done on the engine. I chose to get a pre-made custom wire harness from PSI because it's nice and neat. Originally, I was going to take this stock wire harness, cut off what I don't need, tape it up, cover it. I would have made it look nice, but this was so much easier and yeah, it looks good. So, a couple connectors I are not on here that I would have wanted that I'll have to run separately, but for the most part, the wire harness is on. Now I just got to wire it up into the dash. It goes up into the dash, under the dash. The computer will mount under the dash inside the truck, so the engine bay here will not be cluttered with fuse boxes and computers and stuff. Keep it a nice clean look. The other thing I'm doing different is the booster was going to mount right here. Although it would fit, it'd be really tight up against here. And originally I was going to use this booster that came with the engine. I bought this engine on a pallet and it came with a lot of bits that I thought I might be able to use, could use, but it turns out I really don't want to use it. Um, it wouldn't be a perfect fit on that booster. The brake pedal wouldn't be exactly where I want it inside the car. So, from CCP, uh, CPP, I picked up this booster. It's a lot smaller of a booster, so it won't be in the way. It also does not mount here. It mounts over this way a little bit more. And then once it's inside, the pedal offsets. So this way, the booster will be away from the engine. Yeah, so it doesn't look cluttered. The only problem I have is now I have these holes here that the previous owner drilled in for a, a standard booster. Um, I'll do something with that. I might, I might put flat metal over this whole firewall section on both sides and I give it a flat, seamless look. But I'm not sure. Uh, I, I really... Um, on the fence on how to deal with those holes short of pulling the firewall you know and welding them up and pulling the engine back out and repainting it so we'll figure that out as we go along so that's where we're at with the front I got the high mount AC on there I think it looks all right um, I would have preferred them low the alternator and the, and the uh, AC unit and you see the engine more but it looks cool I may change that altar out later out for a chrome one or polish it or something. So that's it with that. Um, I have to get a battery box. The battery goes right here. That's where they stand it go. Um, I thought about mounting it somewhere where you don't see it. Plenty of places I could do that underneath in the frame. But with the booster on the one side, the driver's side, and I leave this side blank, it just kind of be like that, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna put the the, the uh, battery in the uh, stock location. As far as radiators, I have the LS3 radiator here that I have to modify the core for, or I have a brand new stock radiator. It's a four core. So it should be able to handle the LS. So I'm going to see uh, which one sits in there the best and works out the best for me. Um, next thing I'm working on is on these trucks, believe it or not, here's the fuel, where the fuel cap goes. The fuel tank is actually inside the truck behind the seat. Doesn't sound so good. Now I have a brand new, came with the truck, actually up there, I think you see it. Brand new tank for back in here. I got the 
the filler tank, filler and cap, the whole assembly to come up here. Came with the truck, so that was my plan was to use it because obviously I paid for it when I bought the truck. But uh, I've been having second thoughts on that. Because of the LS motor, it needs a high pressure fuel pump. I'd have to run the line down from that tank and put a fuel pump on the rail, which is fine. It's done all the time. Uh, but I chose not to do that. So now I have a steering column and a booster that I don't need, and now I have a in-cabin fuel tank I don't need. Both I'm sure I can get rid of. So what I got is a tank that's going to relocate back here. Normal position for most cars, right in the rear. Um, custom made by CPP. It should just bolt right in right there. The sending unit is in the tank, obviously. The fuel pump is in the tank. And then we'll just have to run the line up and up close to the chassis, put a uh, regulator and fuel filter. And that should be it. That should look good. And this is what I have right here. This is the tank. As you see this little notch here. can fit around over here. Underneath here. So it should fit perfect. And... I got the regulator, sending sending unit, pump, hoses, little bunch of bits to uh, put it in. So that'll probably be what I'm going to work on next. I'm thinking I'm going to jump back from the front right now and work on the back. Since I am also waiting, should be here tomorrow or Friday, the vintage air condition unit. It goes inside the cab. And then the lines come out here and go go to the uh, compressor and the condenser that will be in there. So that's a whole kit. Um, that looks pretty cool. It looks uh, OEM. And uh, of course in 57 they didn't have air conditioning. But this 57 will have air conditioning. It's also a heater unit. Which um, are also wipers. That should be coming that should be coming this week too, so that's going to go and I do all that. So that'll be the next thing I work on after I do the fuel tank, I believe. Um, and that's it. So that's where we're at. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.